The subject today is very important, and I think that it ties in beautifully with the tests that we've been through, the difficulties. You see, the uh, uh, spiritual life is not, as I was saying last Saturday, it's not a matter of God clearing all the brambles from our path. It's rather often God throwing brambles in the way, throwing high jumps that we aren't even sure we can jump, throwing uh, obstacles over which we have to leap and we didn't know we could jump that far. And God wants to test our love for Him. Now many people misunderstand uh, such things. They think that doesn't God know I love Him? Well, of course He does. And He doesn't do this out of idle curiosity. <laughs> he does it to make us strong. It's when we have to leap farther that we become stronger. It's when we have to leap higher that we gain strength. And so the tests that we're given are really a sign of His love. They're a sign of His desire to make us strong enough to enter God. Because remember, God and the kingdom of God, no scripture ever says anything equivalent to um, uh, that the people who enter it uh, can be wimps. They have to be strong. They have to be heroes. They have to gain, get together all their strength in order to make that plunge into God. And this strength comes by being tested. And the tests are difficult in many ways because they, they uh, always sort of go for our weak points. They're bound to. Why should they bother with your strong points? It's your weak points you've got to make strong. So don't ever think, well, God, yes, I don't mind your testing me. Why test me like this? You know this is the hardest one. Well, that's why he has to test you so that you'll become strong. But another thing is that he never gives you more than you can handle. The only thing is that it definitely looks as if it's more. <laughs> Here's the whole trick, and I must say that this whole thing in the lawsuit with SRF was a good example of it. That uh, it, it demands of us that we work with our strong points. Don't worry about the weak points. Try your best, but develop your strengths and then the weak points will gradually come in line with those. Whereas if you work with the weak points and put your energy on that, you will become weaker, not stronger. You see, we become that which we concentrate on. And so don't worry how many, how many faults you have. I mean, you're on this planet because you've got faults. So don't think that, oh dear, what a terrible thing, I'm this way. So many people are afraid of facing themselves. But indeed, it should be a cause for gratitude that you see some flaw in your character. Because then you can get busy and work on it. But how do you work on it? You don't work on it by concentrating on it. You work on it by concentrating on those forces that will bring you. And so the key to this whole thing, and the subject in the, the uh, reading this morning from Rays of the One Light, is how do we become worthy of God's grace? The answer is devotion. Master said in uh, my early days with him, because I was quite intellectual, he kept talking to me, get devotion, get devotion. And uh, I would sometimes talk to him about some fault, asking for advice on how to overcome this or how to overcome that. He said, don't worry about that, just love God more. And I came gradually to understand that that's really what it's all about. That it's like a ship that when it's a big ship going through the water brings many things in its wake. And so also when you have devotion to God, that brings in your wake all those tendencies that uh, you were struggling with and struggling against. Don't think about anything so much as, do you love God enough? God doesn't mind your faults, Master said. He minds your indifference. And if you can work on developing love, 
then you will find that one by one everything else falls away. Now, these tests sometimes make you doubt that teaching. You think, yeah, but look, where am I now? But you find over the years that in fact it's true and that nothing matters to you anymore except just loving God. You know that the only thing you want is His love. Somebody wrote me a letter just this week saying, well, how are we going to keep our devotion to Master after you die? You knew him, but how do we how do we keep it? Well, the thing is, don't think about stories of his life. Think of Jesus. There are some saints who have deep devotion to Christ and to Jesus, and others have none. They're not even Christians. They just call themselves that. And it doesn't matter how long ago they lived. And it doesn't matter about stories of their lives. Make him a living reality in your life, then you'll have devotion.